And on AM560, The Answer. As promised, I'm thrilled to be joined on Get Down to Business with best-selling author, speaker, trainer, and motivator, Elizabeth Calandrino. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us on Get Down to Business this evening. Well, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So you've been an entrepreneur since the age of six, and ever since then, uh, likely at beginning at age seven, um, just a few years ago, you have been helping companies improve their customer experience and offering business strategies. Uh, tell us your story. How did you end up doing what you're doing? <laughs> well, you know, I, I go back and I'm looking at other people's journeys. And, you know, I grew up with parents that were not terribly educated. My mother, my mother actually started going to college, and she dropped out because she thought my grandfather couldn't afford it. And my father, he hadn't gone past the fourth grade. Now, my aunts and my uncles were all pretty much in the same boat. They were uh, all from Italy, uh, no education to speak of, but they had, they had these dreams, and nothing was too difficult for my father because, I mean, he had to try everything that he knew in order to make a living. And as a kid, I was, you know, privileged enough, I really call it privileged enough, to be able to spend a lot of time with him. And he was very kind to me and very interested in me, I guess, as a, as a, as a grown-up. I mean, he would ask me questions about how should we treat customers when I was like seven and eight. Amazing. What happens if, yeah, amazing. Like if he broke something in a customer's house, he was a builder, what would we do? And I'd say, well, we would fix it. And he would say, well, those are the right things to do. And so I think I grew up as a young kid with a lot of, you know, a, a lot of interest and a lot of good ideas. And this is one thing I'll never forget. My dad and I used to spend, at the end of the summer, five days together alone. Now, and that was because um, it had to do with my thought. We had houses that we rented. And so the people that were in our houses for the summer didn't move out until after school started. So I, my mother would stay with my grandparents, and I would go with my dad. And we would get to do things that we never did with my mother. Like, we could have Coca-Cola, we could have potato chips. But the one thing we did is we went out for dinner every night. Now, I was fascinated by the prices on the menu and the number of chairs. And somewhere <laughs> I said to my dad, hey, look, Dad, there's like 50 chairs in here, and this is what things cost. How, how much do they have to do in order to make money? So you had that entrepreneurial money. perspective from a very young age, uh, which yeah. is interesting. And and Liz, one of the things that that I've that I've noticed from uh, from from going through your website, uh, first of all, you you truly are an entrepreneur and involved in so many different businesses, uh, but. Most importantly for our listeners, uh, you know, the, the business community from Chicago and beyond, everybody's trying to stand out and everybody's trying to become a better professional. Of course, we'll share those tips and you've got a fantastic blog on your website. But uh, uh, one of your recent uh, articles that you wrote is particularly interesting to me. You wrote uh, the, the, the topic of seven ways to stop procrastinating. And it, it, it's very interesting because all professionals, we're all busy, but sometimes we feel that that one day is perhaps more productive than than others. Uh, Liz, I, I know you can't give all of your secret sauce uh, away just in our in our brief conversation, but what's the one tip that you want our listeners to take with them in the working week ahead? Well, here's the thing. If you're really focused, and in fact, people say, what is wrong with you? You know, when you have time off, you're like reading a book, or you're online, and you're trying to figure out something else. And I think as entrepreneurs or people that want to build some kind of an entrepreneurial presence, we really have to be careful of other people. I have to tell you this story because a friend of mine the other day, she didn't go to work. And I said to her, oh, how come you're not going to work? Because I know if she doesn't go, she doesn't get paid. And she says, I have a pain in my arm. And I said, what, what happened She got pain in your arm? Oh, she said, I got a flu shot. I said, well, you don't use a bulldozer, for goodness sake. You know, what's the problem? And she said, oh, that's why I don't ever want to talk to you about stuff. And I thought to myself, you know, I could go into work. You know, they could have dropped the bulldozer <laughs> on me, right? And I would have gone to work. And I was telling my friends at the gym today, and she said to me, well, what's wrong with her? And I said, well, I don't know. She said, well, that's why I like to come to the gym, because people are tough here, and they want to get things done. I think you kind of have to... Like, decide what you want. And, you know, everybody else around you has really decided what they want. 
but we get caught up because, you know, we need approval, we all need some kind of approval, we want people to love us, you know, so we make a lot of, you know, we make a lot of changes for people. And you know what? You can't do it. I have a friend who's a physician, and he's still at it. And he's like 50 years old, and he's like, good job, he's a symphony uh, trombone player. And in an orchestra, I think there's only one or two, there's only one trombone player with what he plays. So he gets some jobs, some he doesn't, but nothing gets in his way. You know what? That's the attitude that, that all entrepreneurs and all professionals need to have, and that's the attitude of Elizabeth Calandrino. Um, we're, we're just thrilled to have you on the program, and, and I know you've written a lot. You've got a fantastic blog on your website. You've got books. You've, you've got a number of uh, public speaking that you've done. I want to make sure our listeners can find you in our uh, 30 seconds remaining. Uh, Liz, I, I know you've got a complicated name to spell. How can our listeners find you online? I'm sorry, say that again. How can our listeners find you online if they want to learn more about your writings and your and, and uh, the work that you do? Well, my website, you know, my first name is easy. It's Lizbeth, L-I-S-B-E-T-H. And as far as I know, there's only two other people on Facebook with that name. And Calandrino, C-A-L-A-N-D-R-I-N-O. And if they just put that in their browser, you know, something is certainly sure to come up about me. You know, like you said, I have been writing blogs since 2006. When my world really changed, uh, it just wasn't as profitable as it used to be. So I had to change myself. So. Well, you've been doing a fantastic job. And we're just thrilled to have you here on Get Down to Business. We'll follow up with you uh, as you uh, continue to share your fantastic resources for small business owners and entrepreneurs. Elizabeth Calandrino, thank you so much for joining us. Check her out online. Coming up, I'm going to talk about seven ways that you can keep unemployment claims under control. Some tips from Tandem HR coming up for you right after this quick break. Great time.